Now I've been releasing videos on Tuesdays, but we're gonna try Saturday this week and see how it goes. Now, in my last video, we talked about combat jujitsu and how athletes use strikes and submissions to illustrate Bruce Lee's famous quote and be like water. And I received a comment from Shane pointing out that it would be very interesting to see the appropriate meta from the bottom player's perspective. So that was fresh in my mind while I was watching the latest episode of the Who's Next series. And without ruining too much of the episode, there was a huge emphasis on the buggy choke because that's what Renee beat J-Rod with in the first round. So I wanted to talk about how the buggy choke can allow the bottom player to be like water. And at the same time, I've been studying a lot of guard passing lately, and this buggy choke is very frustrating from a guard passing perspective. But I do think I found a viable strategy that will help us prevent the buggy choke. And I'll share that with you all in this video. My strategy was like trying to stay away from side control, try to stay more like not south. On my head, I was just like, oh, I cannot get book choke, you know. I don't want to be on the highlights. <laughs> Going into the match, Jansen's goal was not to get buggy choked. So they trained how to defend against it. Your left knee and you escape. You should, Jansen. And the plan was to avoid side control as much as possible and go to north south. The issue is, in order to get to north south, you have to be very aggressive with your head. It's your head being down by your opponent's hips that prevent their knees from being able to come back in. However, if we bring our head down by our opponent's hips, that's when the buggy choke is at its most dangerous. So you can see the issue with this strategy because it's going to be hard for us to pass to north south without committing our head which would make us vulnerable to the buggy choke. When we're attacking from top we generally don't want our opponent's forearm across our chin. We want our head in between their bicep and their ear. And a lot of times how we get there is by putting our head on the ground. But if we're scared to commit our head down towards our opponent it's going to be very hard for us to solidify a pass. Job. He's scared That's to hard. engage the pass. Right. If your opponent is scared to engage the pass, because if they commit with their head, they're going to get buggy choked. So they keep their head away, which makes it easy for you to bring your forearm in front of their face and recover your guard. This is exactly how we can start to use the buggy choke to flow like water. Now again, without giving too much away, eventually Jansen does get to north-south, and I believe he does so because he committed with his head while keeping his forearm inside his opponent's leg, making it difficult for Rene to bring his leg up for the buggy choke, and allowing him to transition to north-south. And that's a little teaser into this section here where we talk about what I think is a less risky approach to dealing with the buggy choke. In order to get a buggy choke, our opponent needs to get their armpit over our head, and that's going to be very hard to do if our head is on the center line. And the first time he put up a buggy choke, I knew to keep my head on the center line. The second time, he got off the center line, he was able to lock it up. If we're able to keep our head on the center line and either bring our knee to their hip or bring our forearm to the hip like we saw Jansen use, then when they try and bring their arm over for the buggy choke, there's going to be nothing there. And it may force them to do some desperate things. But the issue is when we do things like a body lock pass, our head is so low down by our opponent's hips that when we go into side control, the buggy choke comes on very quickly. And it's hard to keep our head on the center line as we get more and more perpendicular to our opponent. That's why the goal for Jansen was to get to north-south. Because north-south is another linear position. And for the buggy choke to be most effective, it needs to be in a perpendicular situation. And again, take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. Because these dudes throw buggy chokes up from everywhere. And you can see here it being applied from closed guard. But he's working to get a more perpendicular situation to get a stronger finish. So I do think the body lock pass is amazing, but I think it's a bit risky against someone who is very aggressive with buggy chokes. Because when we pass the side control, it's hard to keep our head on the center line. And even if the buggy choke doesn't work, they're gonna recover their guard because of that water effect we were talking about earlier. So instead, what I recommend is trying to stay as linear as possible. So we can use the body lock pass to force half guard. And if they wanna buggy choke us, even if they have a butterfly hook in, they're gonna take it out. So now we have chest to chest half guard where we can work to get our head to a very good passing position and ultimately try to pass straight to mount so we avoid side control altogether. And you can see here from chest to chest half guard, you can bring your head all the way to the ground, which like we talked about earlier, is really good for making sure your opponent can't do much with that far arm. And then again, you can keep your bodies parallel with one another by passing directly to mount. Like I mentioned, I'm starting to study guard passing a bit, and I'm hoping to be able to purchase things like Gordon Ryan's body lock and half guard passing to tighten up some of the details and make it work on high level opponents. But I do think a good strategy to deal with the buggy choke is to force chest to chest half guard through a body lock pass, and then work to pass directly to mount. 
I think it's a much safer strategy than trying to pass through side control into north-south because it's going to be hard to solidify the position without putting yourself at risk. If you're looking for a free way to support the channel, just like, subscribe, share the video. And you can also check out the discount codes and Patreon link in the description below. So again, thank you all for the support and we'll see you in the next video.